So to make this application be able to interact with IP server and this IP server allow it to, to interact with its resource, we must to create a service account for this application within our Kubernetes cluster. Then we will pro this service account will provide us with a token and this token will gi give it to our web application and we will use a post method right and in authorization section or authorization authorization property we give it bearer and then the token that we will have it here so to create a service account copy and then then paste that here and then create a service service or role binding so the subject we, we, we give it the, the, the kind for example here we give it user the kind the kind is user and here we give it a service account right so let me come here and type service Binding dot yaml. So I paste that that here. And first thing I will go into apply is the service service account. Sorry, cube CTL apply. And then cube CTL apply as F service binding. And now, if we try cube CTL this service account, so this one we have just created here. And if we copy that and type cube CTL describe service account and then provide the name of that service account it will show you that there is a token and that token is just a secret so if we type cube ctl git secrets sorry i have this Secret is just is just create. So if I copy that and I type cube CTL describe secret and the name of the secret paste it here. This token we will copy it right and paste it. In the authorization here, right? Here, and this application will be able to to retrieve information about our paths and deployment. But this depends on what are the roles. For example, here we give it only the pod reader. So it cannot be read deployment or services and another thing is 
we can create service uh, role-based access control on namespaces. And what is a namespace in Kubernetes? So what I'm going here, namespace. So by default, when you create your Kubernetes cluster, Kubernetes creates a default namespace. So if we come here now and try to kubectl git name ns, it creates default namespace. And this cube system is for, for for the etd and the scheduler and control manager so if we try to get the parts in the namespace slash n and then cube cube hyphen system as you can see that this is all our it's CD manager as you can see you have two because you have replication of our our or high availability for our master node so the namespace is a tool that enable you to separate or to isolate resource from one environment to another environment so we assume let me give you an example in your kubernetes cluster you want to create you want to have a production environment this is production And this is development and this is test so here you want to have your parts here you have you want to have deployments for production and deployment for div and deployment for test this is the benefit of the the namespace so you can create your own namespace using the command kubectl create namespace space production right and now if i try to list kubectl git namespace we have the production namespace here and here when you want to create a pod for example in our case deployment or deployment service here in the in the metadata here we can specify the namespace and give it production or any name or any name of namespace you want this deployment to be in i hope that is clear for you now so once i have talked about namespace and uh, role based access control and service account it's time to talk about ingress controller so what is an ingress controller so let me come here i have already Let me pause the video. So here in these two pictures, I have explained you, I have tried to illustrate what is the difference by using ingress and without using ingress. So we assume that in your cluster, you have launched two applications. 
I will here I have used two application here 